I have a very special announcement today on Coding Math. As you know, when planning out the idea for this channel, I chose HTML5 and JavaScript as a language to create the examples in. The reasons for this were many. It's free and open and works on any platform. The only tools you need are a text editor and a browser. The built-in HTML5 Canvas object has more than enough graphic capabilities for our needs. And while JavaScript has its quirks, the language itself is known by many, easy enough to understand, and portable to most other languages without much of a hassle. Thus far, I've been very comfortable with the choice of JavaScript and HTML, but I never wanted to get so comfortable that I wouldn't be open to other platforms that might serve the needs better. Recently, while searching around on the web, I found something that I'm very excited about. And after using it for several days, now I'm happy to announce that this will be the new platform going forward on which all Coding Math videos will be based. This program was explicitly built for providing vector graphics and animations on the web and is totally accessible to beginners. I'm excited to announce the future of Coding Math, Future Splash Animator. Future Splash Animator is a fantastic program and I think you're going to hear a lot about it in the years to come. The name is a bit of a mouthful, but I imagine it will come to be known as something shorter, perhaps just Splash. It's produced by a company called Future Wave Software. Here you can see their site, where you can download trial versions of the software, find out about the Future Splash player, the Future Splash animator program itself, view demos and samples, and find out about other products like Smart Sketch. Let's take a look at the program. I'll fire up my PC. And start the program. When it launches, you're presented with a large white area down here called the stage. On top is a timeline where you can create animations. And over here on the left is a vast array of drawing tools. I'll grab the pencil tool and draw a circle. And bam, it's magically transformed into a nice smooth vector circle or something close enough to a circle. No more trying to memorize the 18 or so parameters of the arc method. I'll fill this with red using the paint bucket tool. And now watch this. I'll select the whole thing and turn it into a symbol called ball. This symbol can now be reused anytime we want a red circle-ish thing. I can open up the symbol palette and there it is. Now note that I can move this symbol around on the stage by clicking and dragging. Now let's animate it. Up on the timeline, I'll select 30 or so frames. Right click them and choose Insert Frame. Now we have 30 frames in our animation. By default, Splash Animations run at a blazing 12 frames per second. So that'll give us plenty. Next I'll right click again and choose Interpolation and select a Motion Interpolation. I'm hoping they find a catchier name for that too, maybe a Moterp. Now I can select the last frame in that Moterp and make a keyframe. I'll change the position of the ball on that keyframe. Now I can scrub back and forth in the timeline and look at that, Motion. Furthermore, I can hit the Enter key and see it play out in real time. Now I hope you can see how much easier this is than what we've been doing with code. No need to worry about request animation frame or timers, no velocity or gravity variables to keep track of, finding the context, setting fill styles, manually drawing objects, etc. Furthermore, there's something called frame actions which are super powerful. If I select this last frame and choose frame action, I get a robust list of actions that I can add to this frame to control playback. I'll choose Go To and Play. I like the sound of that. Now I'm presented with a UI to enter the parameters for this action. I think this kind of visual programming paradigm is the future. It virtually eliminates syntax errors, and you don't have to remember what all the parameters are for a whole bunch of commands. I really applaud them for going this route, rather than creating a whole new language for scripting actions. I look forward to seeing how this UI evolves and proves to the world that hand coding is a thing of the past. I'll leave the frame as one and close this dialog. Now in the play menu I'll select do play actions. This will make the movie execute any actions that have added to any frames. And now when I hit enter, it plays through, 
hits that last frame and executes that action. This causes it to go to and play frame one. Simple. Now we have a looping animation, all without a single line of code. When we're happy with the results, we can save the project as a SPA file and export the animation as a SPUL. I'm sure SPA and SPUL will soon become household terms for web designers and developers. Now here, Windows has mistakenly identified the SPUL as a Shockwave Flash object, whatever that is. All that needs to be done now to share this movie is to write an HTML page with some sort of object or embed tag that will play the movie in a browser. I haven't figured that part out yet, but I'm sure it will be just a line or two of HTML, not much more than a script tag for JavaScript. One downside to the system is that it does require a browser plugin for anyone to actually see the content. But I'm sure that the Splash Player plugin will soon be ubiquitous and universally loved by all as a unifying force for the web design and development community. In fact, I can see no reason why it wouldn't be adopted on mobile platforms such as iOS as a plug-in to mobile Safari. Apple would be foolish not to jump on board with this. My biggest fear right now is that future wave software could be bought out by some of the large corporation who might only wind up slowly killing off the product. But I think it has a few good years left before we have to worry about anything like that. Anyway, this is the future of coding math. No coding, no math. I hope you're as excited about it as I am. See you soon and have a great April 1st.